Hi, my name is Kinsey Randall, and I was assigned to do an oral presentation on Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi. Um, he was born in Zurich, Switzerland on January 12, 1746. His father died when he was about six years old, and so he was brought up by his mother and a woman who served as a maid in their house um, named Fabelli. And uh, while his father was passing away and um, really sick, the belly promised him that she would take care of him no matter what. She would nurture him and make sure he turned out all right. Um, he attended both elementary and secondary school. Um, and he talks about how elementary school, um, the teaching styles there weren't as effective as he wished. Um, and this kind of helped to shape him and his philosophies later on. Um, I read that in grade school, he didn't feel very smart, and he wasn't good at mathematics or writing or reading um, or spelling, and so when it came down to it, he felt very insecure and inferior. Um, when he reached secondary school, he really connected with one of his teachers, Bodmer, and um, who and he was a very, um, he was a Russo fanatic. He loved his teachings, loved his philosophies. Um, he felt like Bodmer really understood him and really connected with him. And he that's when he realized that he could learn not only out of books, but from personal experiences. And those would teach him life lessons that would last forever. Um, Bodmer was the founder of the Helvetic Society, and it was a radical political group who sought after the advancement of freedom. Um, Johann became a very active member when he was 19, and uh, this kind of wasn't a good thing uh, because he was suspected um, was suspected for uh, help freeing an author of a very controversial paper that was against the government, so therefore they arrested him, and he was uh, arrested for three days, but he was later proven innocent, so it's okay, but he uh, had some trouble, a lot of trouble, um, throughout his entire life with that. Um, originally, he went to school to be a minister, but soon realized that that wasn't for him. Therefore, he went to try to go into law, but uh, because of that whole experience and his involvement with the Helvetic Society, the magistrates wouldn't let him. Um, so he decided to become an, uh, a farmer and go went into agriculture. Um, in 1769, he married a girl he had grown up with named Anna, and... Um, they had a son named Jean-Jacques, and he kind of was named after Rousseau because uh, Johann really loved Rousseau's teachings and really admired him as a person. Um, he studied Rousseau's teachings and philosophies, of course, and from this, his book Emile came about, um, and he started teaching his son from these teachings. Um, and as he... As he was teaching his son, he then wrote his own book because he noticed that it did work. Um, and so he was comparing and contrasting his book with Rousseau's book, Emile. Um, as he tried to pursue agriculture throughout the years, it didn't really work. So he turned it into an industrial school <clears throat> and he enrolled students who were poor and orphaned. Um, this came from his loving heart. He obviously was very, very kind and very considerate and wants to, wanted to help people as much as he could. Um, this meant that the children could, um, could pay for their education by working. So as this idea was, it was a good idea, it just didn't really work out. Um, and the orphanage school closed very soon after in 1780. And he almost lost everything but it was a good experience. After that, in 1781, he wrote a book called Leonard and Gertrude, and then soon after that came How Gertrude Teaches Her Children, and that affected many writers, um, and people still use it today. It's very interesting. Um, in 1798, the government asked Johann to take charge of an orphanage in Stans, and it was a city who had gone through lots of turmoil and trouble. Um, and of course, he was the first to jump to the gun, he wanted to help as much as he could and um, affect as many lives as he could. And uh, 
And though he had lots of love in his heart, and he went there with um, good intentions, for some reason, um, the people of the town believed that he were he was there from the government to oppress them, and they didn't like it. So, though he was wasn't treated with respect, he still treated the children of the orphanage with love and kindness, and um, it made a big big impact on their lives. Um, the orphanage closed soon after, and he had to leave and couldn't come back. Between 18 and 1800 and 1804, he worked in a school in a town called Bergdorf, and then that school soon moved to um, a place called Everton in 1805. And there he taught until he retired in 1825. So that kind of shows you the kind of person he is. He, though he had been through so many difficult experiences and had tried so hard to help people and love people, and it just didn't kind of, it didn't work out ever. Um, he still tried his hardest, and he still treated people with love and respect like they should be. Um, I thought this was very interesting because it really shows how his personal experiences had really affected his um, philosophy. Because he had been treated with such love and kindness growing up with um, two women raising him. Um, he was really affected and really wanted to treat people with that same kindness. Um, his philosophy of education was based on the realist theory that tangible things are considered primary and ideas are secondary. Um, he believed in sensory learning, which is hands-on learning, and believed that it was the best and most effective way. Um, he believed that the role of a teacher was to develop each child and to unlock their true potential, which I think is really cool because um, he, he said, you plant a tiny seed in the ground, and in that seed lies the whole nature of the, tr of the tree. So he knew that every child had a potential, and every child um, had something, something to offer. And he just wanted to get that out of them. Um, and he would teach through experiences, and um, teach when they were ready. So teach at their pace. Um, I greatly respect Johan, and... I greatly respect his philosophies of teaching, and I think he has greatly influenced um, our society's education. And I'm so thankful for his um, his role in that. And I'm grateful that at, when I was a child, I was uh, taught with his philosophies, taught with love and kindness.